Davis, and today we are going to a detention center. It is on the um, Louisiana and Mississippi state line, really close to it along the Mississippi River. I cannot bring my cell phone into the facility. Um, I don't even think I can use the camera in the parking lot, but I at least wanted to uh, tell you all a little bit about what it's it's like some of the um, ways in which detainees have the ability to get out of the detention center. And so um, after I meet with my client and I come back out, I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about what's going on. If you have a family member or friend, someone that you care about that's in detention um, because they were, uh, they entered the United States without inspection, that means um, they, you know, did not come to the border and claim asylum at a port of entry, but instead they crossed um, without inspection and then were later found by Customs and Border Patrol and taken in and now have been um, placed into one of these detention facilities. So I will follow up with you uh, in, in a little bit. Hello, I am back. I just finished about hour, hour and 15 minutes almost with my client uh, discussing his case uh, when there are uh, detainees in these facilities. They do have access to legal representation. They can call their attorney and um, speak to them when they want. And I was able to come here, meet him in person. And so I just wanted to explain that attorneys can go in there and, and meet face to face. Um, most places that I'm aware of do, um, do allow the attorneys in um, instead of requiring phone call only because of COVID. I know that um, some of those restrictions were in place before, but as of the time of this video, um, May 2022, we are permitted to go inside. But um, if you have a family member or friend who is detained, uh, know that their their attorney can meet with them in person if they are able to and um, I am able to and there are quite a few facilities located in the region of the United States where I am. I also travel to clients where they have an interview with USCIS or um, a, a court case with Immigration Court. Uh, one thing I want to say, if you do have a family member, friend, someone you care about who is detained, there is a doctor, a physician um, at these facilities where they are able to go and see the doctor. So for instance, if they have an injury or they have some kind of pain or some other uh, medical issue, there's a form that they can fill out while they're inside of the center and they turn it in and then they can go see the doctor. Um, they have the forms in English, Spanish, and I don't know what other languages, if they do have them, it might depend on the facility. Um, and they are told this while they are in detention, but I have learned that sometimes um, they don't understand. So uh, that's something that came up that I wanted to explain. If you need legal representation, you can call me. Uh, my office number is 601-724-9255. Hi, I'm back in this three-part video, and early on in the first part, I stated that on my way to visit the client when I was done, um, later on, I would discuss the options that a person may have to be released from detention. And so that's what I want to um, cover here in this third part of the video. So the different ways a person can be released are bond and parole. So bond is something that some individuals are eligible for um, where they would pay a bond to be released from the detention uh, while their immigration case is pending. Um, a person is eligible for bond um, if they uh, have crossed and they entered without entry into the United States. So for instance, if a person is an arriving alien, meaning they arrived uh, seeking asylum at a port of entry, they are not eligible for bond from an immigration judge their option for um, from for release from detention would be a parole. So um, a person is also not eligible for bond if they've been convicted of certain crimes. Um, and at the bond hearing with the immigration judge, 
the amount that needs to be paid in order for their release would be determined by the immigration judge at that hearing. So if you have a family member, a friend, someone uh, that you care about, your sponsor maybe, and you believe they might be eligible for bond, um, you can contact my office and I can assist you with that. Um, parole is the other way a person can be released from detention. Um, parole is a form of release available to certain individuals. Like I said, um, arriving aliens, for instance. Um, I saw about a dozen uh, men being released from the detention center this morning. So they are releasing individuals. Um, there are also specific uh, things that anyone released, whether on bond or parole, have to do. They have to follow certain procedures with checking in with the deportation officer, and that's all um, going to be explained to them and given to them in a document when they are released. Lastly, once they are released, whether it's bond, parole, following the rules of, of their release is important, and then also arranging transportation. So once they're released, they're, they're kind of on their own, and so um, it's important as a family member, friend, sponsor, that you already have um, coordinated some type of transportation for them, especially if you're not in the area where they're detained and you need to get a taxi, an Uber, um, a flight or whatever arranged. That is something that, that you will be responsible for doing if you are involved with um, caring for this person and ensuring that they are uh, safe and taken care of. If you have any questions, you need assistance with uh, your friend, family member, or maybe it's you, you have an immigration case, give me a call 601-724-9255. Um, I can speak with you, I, I do consultations, um, and I can um, talk to you more about prices and all that sort of thing with providing legal services. Uh, one thing I also wanna mention is pro bono or free legal services are available by a lot of nonprofit organizations. If you wanna know whether I provide pro, no, pro bono services, uh, I do. However, I'm not taking any pro bono cases at this time because I already have some that I'm working on. And so um, I cannot take on any additional pro bono cases at this time. Again, please call my office if you do want to hire an experienced immigration attorney. It's 601. 724-9255. I'm also putting my um, Instagram and email in the in the bottom the box below so you can contact me there if you want to as well and I hope to hear from you soon.